All right, we're on the air. Uh, hey. <laughs> this is Thursday. Oh, wait, let me do that again. This is Thursday, July 17th. There are six days until San Diego Comic-Con 2014. Welcome to the SD Concast, the official podcast of the San Diego Comic-Con unofficial blog. V-A-N-U-H-T-E-E, go. Oh my God, I love Life Journal, and my Life Journal loves me. Current mood is hyperactive, current news on Refuge 73. I love the color scheme, it's pink and purple, it looks dreamy. I love all the posts I make, and the million comments that they rake. I love the internet, and I love the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special SD Concast this week. Uh, I am joined by uh, Carrie Dixon. Hello, Carrie. Hey, Jeremy. And also James Riley, my partner in crime. Hello, James. Good evening. And our very special guest today, we're going to be talking all about Nerd HQ with Zachary Levi and David Coleman. Hello, guys. Hey, hey. Hey, guys. All right, so we're going to get right into it because that's where our, our viewers want to that's what they want to hear. So let's go ahead and start talking about Nerd HQ. But yep. what I wanted to ask you is, you know, Zach, we've talked to you a couple times this year, um, and uh, we started right from the the crowdfunding that you did for Nerd HQ earlier this year. I mean, what did you learn from that experience? Oh wow, uh, <laughs> we learned a lot of things from crowdfunding. Uh, one is that uh, I don't like crowdfunding, although I guess I kind of I knew that going into it. I, not that I don't think it's a powerful and amazing thing for many reasons. Um, it's just really hard. You really expose yourself and we really expose ourselves and uh, you know unless you unless you run a campaign the way that everyone thinks you're supposed to run it, uh, you really open yourself up to a lot of criticism and we got a lot of criticism. We got a lot of love and for everyone out there who supported us and believed in us and understood our messaging and didn't try to twist it and make us out to be really horrible people. Thank you so much. I love you and appreciate you. <laughs> and I really hope you are uh, either at Nerd HQ or watching all the panels live. That was the whole point of wanting to do that and crowdfund with you. Um, look, I, for anything that you know was on us, if there was messaging, I've said this before, but I will say it till I die. If there was any messaging that was unclear or whatever that, that genuinely led people to misunderstanding or criticizing us, that's on us, and I apologize for that. But I think that there was a whole other thing that people were trying to kind of specifically and purposely twist on us, which was difficult, which was that we were claiming to be a solely nonprofit company and that all monies were going toward Operation Smile. And I can't say, I, I've said it so many times, I say it in every panel that I do, we're a company. We're trying to sell T-shirts and do well for ourselves, and we just like to be the type of company that also likes to raise money for charity. And to be faulted for that, or said, or told that that is somehow misconstruing funds, or I go, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how to win in a situation like that. So yeah. I learned that. I learned that you've got to be very, yeah. very careful with that kind of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, but I think we also learned at the end of the day, we have a really uh, dedicated and loyal fan base that have, you know, been following Zach forever, that have been with the Nerd Machine since the beginning, and really understand what we're trying to do. Um, at Nerd HQ, you know, give a great free event for everybody, do some amazing, you know, conversations for a cause, for charity and photos and signings and all those kind of things. And it's like, you know, we're just trying to do the the best we can. And this year we needed some help. And you know, thank thankfully uh, our fans, the the really dedicated people and the ones who had never yeah. heard us before, yeah. helped us to do that. And so it was, you know, I, I mean, would, yeah, I would I would say that we definitely learned that there's a lot of people out there who actually didn't know what Nerd HQ was, learned through the campaign, and were stoked to be a part of it. I I would argue that I don't think that we learned that we had a passionate dedicated fan base, because we've always known that we true. have a passion. That's, dedicated. That's why we even decided to do the campaign to begin with. I, mm -hmm. If I didn't think we had that, if we didn't think we had right. that, it would have been completely bonkers to attempt to do what we did. And it was still pretty kind of bonkers. But look, at the end of the day, for everyone out there who contributed, we would not be able to do Nerd HQ without you this year. It's Absolutely. No, no question. We were able to do exactly what I said in the video, which is we were we raised money with you, and we supplemented what we couldn't raise with sponsorship dollars, and we are mm -hmm. able to do what I, we believe is going to be the best Nerd HQ to date. And that's not just a sound bite. We really believe that. We keep, you know, working out kinks. And finally, uh, we're back in the same venue for the first time in the history of the event. So we're able to apply learned lessons. Um, 
Yeah, and improve, and improve on what we yeah. didn't do well last year, and I'm sure we'll learn a million lessons from this year as we do it, you know, next week. But yeah, um, every year gets a little bit better and a little bit more fun, and hopefully this year will be the the biggest and best that we've ever done. Yeah, yeah. and and we're very excited because you know let let's put that behind us. Nerd HQ is happening. We all got behind <laughs> it. We're totally yeah. stoked. We can't wait to see what you guys are going to bring next week. So let's get right into this year. Uh, so what I wanted to ask you is, you know, we uh, Carrie talked to you about earlier this year or earlier this week about what's going to be new this year as compared to last year. And we've got a couple of questions out there about the wristbands and things like that. So why don't sure. you tell us about, you know, what we can expect that's new this year? Yeah, I'll tell you. So we tried to, we wanted to make sure that we tried to connect everyone to uh, the event uh, on site and, you know, no matter where they were. So we created the Nerd HQ app, which is actually just released in the last few minutes. Um, and will be available and is available. Just so it's going to take some time to populate the searches and that kind of thing. But we'll be tweeting out that link really soon for people to download it on iOS. It's already out for Android, so we're super excited about that. And basically, what we're doing is is we're connecting that app um, to this really cool nifty wristband we made. It's it's custom. You wear it the whole. You wear it the entire time that you're on the you're at Nerd HQ, and it basically has a little RFID chip inside. So that your all of your information that you want for your Facebook, your Twitter, for the photos you take at the photo booth, instead of having to, you know, before we've had to input everybody's email every time they take a photo, now they can take a photo, swipe the wristband, and boom, it comes right to their phone. So there, we've tried to add a lot, a high level of technology to the uh, to the actual on-site experience, um, so that people can. It's much easier. They can check out more things uh, without having to put their email and uh, Facebook and Twitter in, you know, five or six different yeah. times at every different... Yeah, yeah and, not, and, not that, and not that RFID, and not to uh, contradict you, uh, but not that it's it's not, you know, rocket science, it's not high, a high level of, 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 of technology in that regard, but it is integrated technology. We're, just, we're trying to make it... We've always wanted HQ to be the most immersive, interactive, uh, intimate experience that we can offer for celebrities and fans, right? And for sponsors who come in and want people to play with their games and not just like a passing glance, but like be able to take some time and check this stuff out right. and uh, the technology as well or the photo booths and, you know, whatever. Uh, it should feel like y you are, you should feel comfortable, you should feel, it should be fun and, and it shouldn't be a bear. And the more that we can do things like this and allow it to just streamline the entire experience for people Without without being in you know it's to, it's there it's right on our You just pop it done. It's it's uh, uh, we're gonna keep trying to integrate more things like this because why not? Technology is amazing. <laughs> and it's called the Nerd Machine and Nerd HQ. So <laughs> yeah. if we don't do really techy things, it seems like it's you know yeah we're kind of missing the point. Kind of missing the point. <laughs> so the cool is thing is so when you first walk in this year, there'll be kind of a registration area where you'll come in, you'll say, hey, here's my app and here's my confirmation number. We'll put it in. We'll hand them a wristband. We'll hand them this really awesome Nerd HQ, Nerd Machine pendant that everybody who downloads and comes to the event will get for free. Um, it's kind of like a thank you for downloading keep the app. Keepsakes, keepsakes. Yeah. Super <laughs> custom made here in the United States, actually made right here in uh, Los Angeles. Um, and so that you know, you keep this on, keep that wristband on the entire time, and then everything that you do will be stored for your photos and your posts and tweets. It just makes everything a lot easier for you. Because again, you know, social sharing is half of what Nerd HQ is about for everybody. Like telling people where they are, what they've seen, you know, posting their photos from the photo booth, and and you know, I'm at the conversation with Nathan Fillion or Josh Whedon yeah. or whoever those happen to be. And so, yeah. you know, and the other cool thing is you're going to be getting, you know, notifications about all the smiles for smiles, all the signings. So it's all right there in your hands. So you don't have to keep, you know, going back and forth to all of the social media sites. We'll be able to tell people right then yeah. what's going to happen. Um, I think it's going to be a much more uh, efficient user experience, uh, and I think it's and I think it's going to be fun for everybody. Yeah, and again, and uh, as you know, like with anything that we introduce in its first year, who I don't who knows there could be little buggies or glitches or whatever. So be, bear with us. Yeah. I don't we don't we don't anticipate them. We anticipate it running pretty smoothly. We've tested it pretty well, um, but this is something that we we saw and we're like we got to do this. We got to incorporate cooler stuff to just make this a more immersive integrated experience for everybody cuz why not? There's no reason to not do things especially when it's not that complicated to to make it a better experience for uh, everyone attending, you know. 
Yeah. So, so what are some of the other things that are going to be going on at Nerd HQ? Like, what are some of the games? What are some of the activities? Yeah, so I'm filling a kiddie pool full of Jello pudding pops, and I am <laughs> going to dive into said kiddie pool. Uh, and what? <laughs> it's like double dare. I know I'm going to cover it yeah. in whipped cream. I'm going to take a slide into. That is not happening. We should. Have- <laughs> Darn it, I thought that was our exclusive. Yes, what, did we, what did we revamp double there yeah, in the know, middle of the baseball it. stadium? Yeah, you know. heard it right here, folks. Yeah. Um, it can happen next year. <laughs> Not really. Maybe. Carrie, to address your question, um, actually we have some really great stuff coming. So Alien Isolation will have a playable demo for the new you know, Sega game. Brand new reboot. I saw it at E3. It is scary. It is fun. It is very different than any other of the Alien games that you've played. It's kind. Of, it's like you know, first person, but it's horror thriller. It's all about survival. Uh, super excited about that. We'll have about 14 demo stations inside of a enclosed area there on the concourse, so you can play that game. On the lighter side, we'll have Sonic Boom. Right, exactly. As well, which is super fun, and you know, they're having a very d- different kind of experience. Yeah. It's like you know, the the scary and then super, you know, uh, energetic fun. Um, so we'll have those games there. Uh, we also have a brand new digital version of Catan, Settlers of Catan, called Catan Anytime, that's going to be on the Internet Explorer browser. Uh, they're going to be there in the gaming arcade, which is going to be super fun. Um, for gaming, we'll have a Hatsune Miku game on PS3 as well. Uh, that's coming from Sega. Uh, we will have... So that's the big game stuff we're doing. Uh, tech-wise, you know, Intel will be there with new tablets and two-in-ones and laptops and all that kind of thing for people to check out and enjoy. Uh, we'll have... Also integrated and allowing them to kind right. of use at their disposal while right. they're at the at, at HQ. They'll be able to get ticket. You know, if they don't have their laptop or a smartphone with them, they can use them to buy tickets mm-hmm. or whatever that happens to be. Um, we also have some really cool experiences that uh, our friend, you know, Facebook and it, Facebook is a, is a helping us in our social media this year. So we're doing this really cool kind of installation uh, hashtag to the rescue, which I'm going to let you guys. Uh, once we get some images from the event, you guys see what it is. But it's a super fun throwback kind of photo experience. This would be great. Um, we're also going to have, you know, um, Maker Studios is going to be there doing a ton of programming with their creators. I mean, they're going to have stuff very similar to what we did last year, except this year we put them actually in the stadium seats. So they can ac- we can accommodate a lot more people, have a lot more floor space on the concourse. So yeah. but they'll be bringing their, some of their biggest creators down to the event to, um, you know, Shoot, take shows, have meet and greets, that kind of thing. It's Q&A's. really expanded mm-hmm. uh, programming for that part of the uh, for that part of the experience. Mm-hmm. That's and great. then yeah. beyond that, I mean, there's a, a lot of the same, you know, oldies but goodies, because uh, that's what I'm about, and that's uh, our conversations for a cause and um, our parties. Um, we we have a giant fan party at 9 p.m. Thursday night. Everyone is welcome. Open doors. Uh, if anybody made it last year, you know it was probably the best of, of, all, of all the parties we threw. Uh, I believe I was uh, up on the stage uh, uh, like like uh, a Pied Piper with a Sweet Child of Mine. Or at some point, I think, there was something going on like that. <laughs> um, don't really remember I don't remember that, a lot of that, that night. weekend, no. That night or that weekend, really. It's <laughs> all, uh, it's San Diego Comic Con. What are you going to do? <laughs> um, and... Uh, well, again, in the conversations for a cause that will be released, that schedule will be released soon. Really, really soon. <laughs> very, very soon. We'll, we'll, we'll give you guys time. We'll make sure that you know we announce, we'll like show the schedule, and then say, okay, guys, in like 24 hours or whatever it is, like here's when they'll go on sale. Um, but we have some really amazing panels of people that we haven't had before. Let's say, let's just say that people we haven't ever had before on our stage will be uh, and some and some, some favorites and that some, yeah have been on our stage. Some and everyone will be happy. About. Uh, but it's a it's a lot. I mean, it's you know it'll be in that in that range of what we did last yeah. year. We'll be streaming them as well, just like last year. Um, hopefully, uh, with a more improved. We've done a little bit more improvements in terms of how we're doing the the stage and kind of the technology involved in all cameras, of that. Lighting, cameras, lighting, sound. Yeah. You know, we're 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 turning think, all the screws. We're we're trying to squeeze it to make it the best thing we can every year. I mean, to us, it's like we're we're making a you know we're making twenty five plus hours of a you know talk show series in basically four days. Yeah. So, you know, that's a pretty, especially when you're trying to do it in the outfield of a baseball stadium that isn't built for talk shows. Talk shows. <laughs> so, but we think, you know, we think this year we've improved on what we did last year, making it a lot more uh, fan-friendly. We've increased the size of the, 
you know, these yeah, there's going to be about 60 more seats yeah. now for the conversations, which is great. So that'll help. Excited about that, raising even more money for right. Operation Smile. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> we're stupid. Yeah, I mean, there's so much great stuff. Another cool thing is uh, our buddies over at Stupid Buddy Studios uh, and Robot Chicken are going to be doing a really cool uh, set where they're going to be animating little videos with fans. Uh, with the puppets from their actual show. So that's going to be a really fun experience people really haven't had a chance to do before. So that'll be a, a fun kind of experience. And, and I think, uh, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on to one. I'm going to hold on to one. What are you going to hold on to? Uh, uh, can you see it? Can we? Yeah, go ahead. We're, we're having a Sesame Street activation, uh, which we're very... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um they uh, they will be in a, a a part of the venue as well. Um, oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's going to be a really fun um, thing that they've actually done before, which is um, I can't remember if it's box heads or block yeah, heads, but essentially you you wear game, yeah. you wear a box over your head and somebody else controls you. So it's kind of like a living breathing video game of sorts, it's like Cookie <laughs> Monster, or whatever, yeah. and then the other two are cookies, and he's trying to grab it. Like, yeah. you know, forward, left, right, grab that kind of thing. So. Yeah. And part of that is was a we're giant fans of Sesame Street, and I've been yeah. blessed enough to kind of work with them a few times now in the past year, uh, and so that's kind of a lot where a lot of the conversation of this started. And um, but you know we're always trying to make the event uh, as multi demoed as possible, and we have noticed in past years that and through through our website and purchases and stuff, there's a lot of kids. There's a lot of kids that still love coming down to San Diego during that time, but there's not necessarily a ton of programming and activations for kids. And um, so the more we can kind of offer things that, oh, these are more for adults, and but these are also kind of family friendly, you know, I think that we yeah. want to be as inclusive as we possibly can. Um, uh, so that, that was a great opportunity for us. And again, we love Sesame Street, so it's like, you know, when they say, hey, we'd like to, we go, yes. I don't know, I don't even, I can stop you right there. Whatever you're about to say, the answer is yes, let's work that out. Come and hang out with us, so so that'll be happening, as well as some other little surprises. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Well, I can um, tell you, your arms went yeah. immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to find that there's uh, not just kids who are going to be enjoying that Sesame Street. Oh no! Really? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. By the way, I did not mean to alienate adults from no. enjoying. Sesame no. We are we are totally not implying that whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're speaking to the right audience there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, so let me ask you this. Um, so you mentioned the the photographs and such. Uh, so in previous years, you've done the 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 photo booths for smiles and the autograph signings. Are you guys doing that again this year? Oh yeah, absolutely. As much as we can. I mean, it's you know that always was kind of um, it started as and we 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 have rough ideas sometimes when people can commit to that. Because sometimes we'll go to people and say, hey, can you do a panel? They're like, man, I'd love to, but I've only got 30 minutes, and it's this time. We've already got a panel. And so we can say, come and just come do photos. You can raise money for charity doing photos, and we're able to kind of work that out and schedule that ahead of time. And so some of that we still do. Some of it is just very impromptu. And I personally, I I always kind of do mine impromptu because I never know where I'm going to be at any given second. I am just a chicken with my head cut off when I'm down there, which is fine. It's, you know, it's... Uh, it's kind of it's kind of uh, part of the the fun and the magic of it, um, and then you know sometimes you never know somebody does a panel and they have a great time they're like you know what actually I don't need to be at my next thing until this time and great let's tweet it out go and do some photos or so we'll we're gonna push that and signings as much as we can you know the photos is a little bit easier just because we have a station and a, you know you can click off the photos and people just to be able to just be this close to your favorite celebrity and do right. a little you know back to back gun pose or whatever the heck you end up doing. Uh, that's a memory, man. That's a memory. But that's also why the app will be so helpful to people who really, you know, who are big time fans, because they'll be able to get that notification to me. Like when we decide to do that, it'll go right out to them, and so they'll get it as a, you know, notification on their phone. Hey, smiles for smiles with Zach's going to happen in 15 minutes. Make sure you're there. Yeah. Um, you know, again, keeping him up, keeping everybody connected as much as possible. Yeah. That's great, James. You you had a question, didn't you? Yeah. Last year, you guys did for the first time the uh, screening, and it was Serenity. And is is there any plan to do something similar this year? There is not this year uh, to do a screening. There's a little bit. Uh, the Padre schedule is a little different this year, in terms of when the team is gone and when the team is there. Like you know, we we took the field last year. Like we were like, can we do a concert? Can we do what? What is it we can do? And so the screening was a really great way for us to you know utilize that space and and yeah. 
to raise more money for charity. But uh, really, scheduling-wise, it doesn't really work that well this year. But we're going to do a lot more cool stuff in the uh, in the concourse that night. So fans will still be having some great stuff to do Saturday yeah. Saturday night. Not by, by the way, much to our chagrin, I I, I would I'd, I'd show a movie on the field every night. I would have a rock concert on the field every night. I'm the one who ends up spending all the money doing all right. these things because right. I just want to keep doing cool stuff. And you, know, you got a baseball stadium. What the heck are you going to do with a giant baseball stadium? Yeah. But, and I, you know, play movies, uh, but but it was it was kind of a logistical thing this year, and um, you know, normally, uh, as you guys well know, you know, they always San Diego literally schedules Comic Con and the Padres. Uh, they make sure that there's not that crazy overlap because that would, I don't even know how that that would choke the city with traffic that, and people. I mean, that would be pretty intense. Um, that happened one year. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Uh, and. Um, but but normally they're also there's more of a buffer too on either side of the con, and uh, this year that buffer was was uh, much um, chopped down, and therefore there's certain logistics with what can you do on the grass? Can you do anything on the grass? Do you need to put certain you know co- uh, protection and things and price tags? And it's like all right, this this is just going to be what this year is going to be. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. So we have a a question from. Uh, our listeners, our viewers. Uh, this yeah. is a good one. I think you guys are going to be all over this. So Jennifer Willis says, I've never been to Nerd HQ. I was at Comic-Con last year but didn't get the chance to enjoy the festivities. What advice would you have for a Nerd HQ virgin? Oh, well, uh, Jennifer. Don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared. Uh, we're, we're, we're a very nice bunch. Um, well, look, I mean, I think, uh, you know, for a Nerd HQ virgin, a virgin, virgin, uh, version of a virgin, um, I would say, you know, some of the big things that people don't necessarily, uh, I think, realize is that it is it is a free event. So when you come to uh, the Palm Court, like basically the main entrance of uh, Petco, uh, you just walk right in. You just walk in, you walk up the escalator, the stairs or the escalator there, and you're inside. And you can come and basically just hang out, charge your phone, get some food, um, meet your friends, play some video games. Yeah. Uh, play with some technology. Uh, go check out check out the maker stage. Basically, everything in that entire concourse um, is all free. Like enjoy it. You know, uh, no pass is necessary. The only things that will cost you any kind of cash are the merchandise that we sell as a company uh, and any of the celebrity interactions, be they the panels, the photo booth sessions, uh, the smiles for smiles, or the signings for smiles, any autograph session that we host there. And those are all twenty bucks a pop essentially. And all of that goes to Operation Smile. So if you're ever wondering where all the money goes to, we make money on merch, all the celebrity interactions are all for charity, and everything else is all for free. You don't have to spend any money on that. Well, you got to pay for your food and drink, um, but, you know, that, I think you're going to have to do that anywhere. So I wish we could put the we can. Uh, so that, that's, that's the kind of easiest that kind of rundown of what Nerd HQ is, I guess, in that regard of what you can experience. And download the app. That, that will be, there will be so much information there. Um, and definitely take advantage of our RFID when you get there. You know, uh, we want yeah. Boom! There you go. There you go. Down right it. there. Right there. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's it's a really it's it's laid back. It's a you know we wanted it to feel like a little bit of an oasis, a bastion, a place where you could kind of go and catch your breath or lose your breath on a dance floor if necessary. Uh, definitely come Thursday night. We'll be dancing our butts off. Excellent. All right. Um, you guys talked about merchandise for a little bit. What kind of uh, Nerd HQ gear, or what new Nerd HQ gear can you expect? Can we expect at the event? Um, anything uh, yeah. new? Any ex- anything exclusive? Yeah, yeah, we just released. Uh, we just released a bunch of new stuff for because you know when we when we got down there all the time, people were like, "Oh man, I wish I could have got this because I totally would have worn it before I came." And so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what we did is we released some new Nerd HQ and Nerd Machine stuff a few weeks ago, so people could actually have some stuff when they come, and then they can pick up the rest when they when they show up on site. We're gonna have a few exclusives. This hat just, uh, this one just, just just got finished. This is our brand new trucker hat made here in the United States of America, uh, which we like to do as much as we can. As um, we are want, to as do. we are want to do. It's got a cool little like, uh, I don't know if you can see that on there. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Little, little hidden stuff. We'll have that. We're gonna have this really cool limited edition uh, jacket that we had. The, the literally limited edition. Like I think we have like 55 of them or something. Uh, doing some really cool exclusive stuff. Brand new bags that nobody's seen before. We have a, a shirt that we're doing with uh, our friends at Stupid Buddy that'll be on site as well. So that's pretty cool. I mean, 
there'll be some new stuff people haven't seen before. We have a new iPhone case that uh, I can show you right now that isn't on sale yet. New iPhone 5 case. It's called the Nerd Army case. Looks very. It's like uh, very similar to the shirt that we just released. That's cool. So we'll have that out there as well, and we'll have that for iPhone 5 and uh, Galaxy S5 as well. So we'll have some new stuff. We're, we're excited. And then, you know, you know um, some of the oldies but goodies stuff we'll have uh, at the same time. Yeah. Um, so so we, we, we found that, you know, typically at HQ, a lot of the traffic that comes through that wants to purchase is specifically Nerd HQ uh, merch. Uh, not that we don't sell a lot of the great, you know, classic shirts and stuff that we sell, but most people tend to kind of want yeah. the, the event-specific stuff, so that's what we go pretty heavy with. Yeah. Yeah, they want the souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. Which I get. Yep. Awesome. All right, uh, Carrie, you have a question, right? Yeah. Let's jump back for a minute to everybody's favorite topic, conversations for a cause. Yeah. I, know, <laughs> I know you said uh, this year's schedule, like you've got some of the biggest names and all that that you've ever had before, but how do you guys think this year's schedule is shaping up compared to other years? Oh, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, look, I think every year has been fantastic, uh, partly because, <laughs> by the grace of God, it's yeah. it's come together in so many ways. Uh, so I'm just happy to be able to do it. And ev and every year, without fail, um, people walk away from it very happy. So I, I go, great, that's awesome. Because um, really, it's not even, t I mean, this this might sound kind of ridiculous, but it's not even a matter of size of name or... It's a matter of love of audience. It's a matter of are we offering panelists that the people down there really want to talk to? Because uh, you can have a giant name that everyone's like, all right, I don't care about their work. I, they're not particularly interesting. I'm, I don't have any questions for them, and they don't come. And we and well, it, anyway, but we uh, try to find who we believe are going to be very much fan favorites. Are people who have a heart for it, who have a heart for fans, uh, and who have a heart for wanting to interact with those fans, and they, and also, like, the, giving them an opportunity to be seen and heard in a way that they are never really given, because, look, you know, um, as someone who comes from that world, you know, you go and do talk shows and things, and they're all about sound, you know, there's, it's very sound bitey, and, you, you know, you got to try and tell an anecdote in, like, two minutes, and I'm horrible at that. Anyone who sees my interviews shows that I'm horrible at that. I'm really, I've done conversations for a cause selfishly so that I can just be verbose. That's really what I'm getting down to. <laughs> and I try to find other people that like to be verbose, and they like to actually be able to speak to people and, and have an opinion and share a story that's not, you know, two minutes long. Um, and, and, you know, and also get deep. I mean, <clears throat> I have been because I've been there essentially almost every panel with the exception of last year when Nathan and Alan stepped in like, like uh, you know, demigods and just were such rock stars and helped me host those few panels that I couldn't be there for. Um, I have personally been a part of just sitting there on the side of the stage, some incredibly deep panels. Um, uh, and people really, kind of, you know, just talking about life and, 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 uh, and hardship and kind of their journey. And I think... What that's allowed so many fans is an access into someone's life that allows them to be a human being. And when you come from a world of celebrity, you really, uh, almost more than anything sometimes, you just want people to look at you and say, oh, yeah, you're a human being. You know, you see those weird things or those you know, silly little things like People Magazine are like, oh, celebrities do that too. Well, they, they <laughs> wear pants too. Well, they get a latte too. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, <laughs> this is an opportunity for people to actually see the, the man behind the curtain. It's, it's to see a, a person for who they are, and um, and I really feel like it uh, is a healthy and good and powerful thing. Uh, I feel like I tangented a bit in, in that regard. <laughs> so as far as the people that we have, yes, I'm excited about the panels that we have. Um, you know, I'm really excited anytime somebody wants to come back. That's always a big hallmark for me because... Uh, that means we didn't fail them the first time, <laughs> and they enjoyed themselves. Yeah. The good thing is, yeah, we've had people who, you know, we've had some people who have been with us since the beginning. Yeah, like, yeah. Guys like Seth and Matt and those guys yeah. from Robot Chicken have been with yeah. us every single year. Yeah. So Fillion's, Fillion's yeah. coming back. I mean, I can't. I, that seems like a no-brainer, but he's coming back because he's awesome and he's Nathan and. Uh, and other people are coming back, yeah. and you know, and other brand new people, and and brand new people. 
and brand new people on brand new shows, and uh, or and brand new people with some of the uh, returners. Yeah, there, that's true. there's going to be some, some mixing up in that regard as well. So, <laughs> uh, you know, and look at the end of the day, as long as 300 ish people are into whoever that panel is or panelist is. That's all we really want. That's all we're trying to accomplish, you know? Yeah. Let's go and make good with that panel and that time and make it special for everyone involved. And I feel like we've done that pretty well. And we're going to continue to, to make that as best of, of an experience as we can in the many, many years that we will do this. Right. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, I know you said we're going to get the schedule soon, but should we expect, just like in years past, that this will kind of just be the first wave of panels and then you guys will kind of keep announcing things? I, it'll probably be in a, I mean, it probably won't be every single panel the first day, just because I think it's just the overwhelmingness of that. But we'll, a lot of times what happens is, is we'll do the first wave and then we'll do a second, and then things will happen that we didn't even really expect to happen. Yeah. And we'll be able to add, like, we added panels, I think, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday last yeah. year. Yeah. And one Sunday with Tom that nobody even knew about. Like, we, well, yeah. we knew, we knew, we knew, but, but we didn't, we, can't, we, we didn't say. know. I mean, you know. Yeah. Kevin but, Feige and Marvel were very, very, very kind in allowing us to, but even that, that we didn't, we didn't even know until very, very last minute. And yeah. then once we did know, we couldn't say anything. And then, you know, but I, yeah. I, we really want to play ball with that. That makes total Absolutely. sense. You know, they, they got their, their specials and their surprises, and we don't want to spoil any of that. And, yeah, maybe some of that stuff will happen. We're pretty – it's getting – most of the schedule is – It's pretty full. Pretty all full up. Yeah, so I, I don't, a lot. Once we release what the main schedule is going to be, there will be – I don't, I, don't, I don't imagine there will be that many, like, oh, and last-minute editions. Right. But you never know. Yeah. So let me – so, so, uh, what is it? Four years ago now, um, you started at uh, Jolton Joe's. It was a smaller place, and you've kind of expanded every year. You've grown. I mean, it, Nerd HQ's got more popular over the years. Are you expecting a bigger crowd this year? What are you doing to handle the additional attendees? Um, yeah, you know, what I, are you doing? I mean, we hope so. I mean, look, we, the venue. The thing is, is like the, you know, the places that we that we use at Petco uh, can only handle so many people, and we plan for that capacity every day. Um, we plan for that amount of people. So, you know, as many people as, as will fit in the venue per fire code, that's how many we'll try to put in there. Um, you know, we always expect, we want as many people there as possible. Um, and I think this year, yeah, now that we're in the same venue again, um, we have a lot, a lot of support, uh, again, from our sponsors and the guys who are out promoting the event. So, you know, I think all that together um, will make it a bigger event. Um, but it, it, I, I feel like, um, and I'm not trying to d defend anything or whatever, but um, w w I just think it's interesting, you know, Jolton Joe's, Block 16, Petco Park, there are definitely differences in, in uh, kind of overall square footage, I suppose, but the the event itself is not really like we still are essentially doing the same thing mm -hmm. at each one of the venues. It was just how to, the, how to, finding the best place to actually facilitate those things. You know, Joe and Joe's. I think the the most seats we could fit into a panel was two like not even no, like maybe. Well, I mean, I think with standing room and things like that, we could yeah, do like it was two, about two twenty. Two twenty. And my my goal was always at least two fifty. I, I I just had a number in my head. I was like, it's got to be at least two hundred fifty people. And then at Block 16, we were able to, with the Cully Warehouse, we were able to get that up to two. Yeah, it was like 240 plus. But then we, yeah. we, we had up to 300 people there, standing room as well. Then we did some, yeah, yeah. like the, the Doctor Who panel. Yeah, yeah, totally, like that. yeah. Um, and then, you know, finally, the way those bleacher seats, uh, the stadium seats work at Petco was just genius. It worked perfectly. And now we're able to even kind of open that up a little bit more and give ourselves even a little bit more leeway. So, um, so really, like even that space is not much bigger than what we had in those other places. Uh, the other rooms where we were activating, you know, video games or technology, uh, are perhaps a little bit bigger. I mean, the concourse of Petco definitely has a, right. a bigger footprint, but we're just not filling it with everything. We're actually allowing people to kind of go, oh, look at that! I can, I can breathe. I can move around a little bit. I can stretch my arms. Um, so, it, for what it's worth, I guess I always just want to tell people we're not trying to become something that's 
massive, though we will always go with where the people take us. If more and more people are coming, we're going to try and accommodate them and give them a little bit more room. But we don't ever want to lose the intimacy of what the event is. Yeah, I think just square footage-wise, yeah, obviously it's bigger. But we're not packing that stuff in with more and more things to do. It's like, oh, this game, this game's over here, and this game's over there. And yeah. it's like there's still room to actually feel like you know you can hang out yeah. and just kind of have a clubhouse. Uh, if you will. So well, watch us watch us eat our words next yeah. year. <laughs> it is completely packed. Sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. So so now, uh, what personally are you guys looking forward to most uh, when you get turned at HQ? What what happens there? What is what is going to basically make you the happiest if you either see it happen or you experience it there? You know, it's funny. My it, this is weird. Maybe my kind of favorite part is like Wednesday night. Like when everything is kind of set up, and you go, take a deep breath. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're here. Everything's in place. We've done the best planning we can do. It's like you know, it's like having that battle plan, right? You have the battle plan. You've now put all your pieces in place, and you're like, okay, we'll see tomorrow when it starts. Pile, pile up everyone in Papua yeah. New Guinea. Yeah. And just build and build. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that is that is. I I really do love that moment too. Wednesday night before we open up and we're kind of seeing everything, and 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 contrastly, that last moment before everything gets torn down on Sunday, right. when kind of everyone's left the venue right before you start hearing all the jackhammers. Uh, it's a really it's a really kind of full circle experience, and you feel like you've really accomplished something, you know. And and I guess you know, kind of hand in hand with that, I feel like we've accomplished what we set out to accomplish. When I see people. Smiling, you know, whether they're smiling at a panel that I see often. I mean, you know, I'm at all the panels, so I, I get to experience that with a lot of the fans and celebrities uh, or panelists. I hate the word celeb. Well, whatever, panelists, um, and um, or on the dance floor with everybody and just seeing people just just you know balls out, sweating like crazy, and you know going going nuts and having fun, and uh, or 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 being at the photo booth myself or watching other people do the photo booth and just seeing. You know, fans' minds just kind of blown a little bit. Like, wow, I can't believe I got this experience, or getting a signature that they always wanted, or um, playing games. That, you know, I don't know. I just, I really like, uh, I just like being a host to people. I like, I, I'm happy when other people are happy. It's, it's, um, uh, and contrastly, I'm very unhappy when, <laughs> when people are unhappy. I'm a sensitive soul, guys. <laughs> Uh, so it's you know I'm always just setting out I'm just always setting out to to bring joy I, I think if if nothing else in life you know I think we we probably talked about this before Carrie it's like you know bring joy as much as you can like just like do cool stuff in the in, in your life and you know we we don't know when you're gonna get snuffed out no, that's that's a little morbid uh, snuffed out like there's a hitman yeah, around right. the corner <laughs> uh, you don't know when you're gonna pass on and I want to make the best of my time and. So seeing people happy and you know certainly there's a there's there is a sigh of relief at, like you were saying I think to carry the in the last interview we did like around Friday night yeah like Friday once the like you get to the the, the Friday night nerd party and you go okay we're like halfway through and uh, it's going pretty good yeah and, and hopefully we, we we're, put out some fires yeah and, hopefully yeah. we'll autopilot kind of the rest of the way and make everybody will be happy and fans will be excited we'll keep raising money for charity which is a great you know like, one of the greatest things that we do down there frankly and. You know, when we finished, you know, at the end of the day, and we're like, "Wow, oh, that's another two hundred and plus thousand dollars for these kids who, you know, will literally get their life changed forever." You think that's? I can't, I can't, you know, I can't beat that. You know what I mean? Like, I can't. Yeah. Giving people a great time and doing something for kids like that, and you're like, I, I'm good. I'm happy with, with how yeah. that turns out. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. So I, I know you guys are busy. Um, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you want to make sure that our our viewers and and, and uh, listeners know about about Nerd HQ? Uh, you know, one thing that I would say that's just kind of popping into my mind is um, this might sound strange or whatever, but uh, there's so much work that goes into HQ, and I think that um, I know I get thanked a lot by fans, uh, whether on Twitter or at the venue or, you know, whenever I'm running around. Um, if you guys ever get a moment and you see this man and you see his wife, Courtney, working the merch booth because she's there all day, every day, 
when you see our volunteers, when you see the people working at Petco Park, when you see our vendors, when you see the people working for Sega or Intel or Maker, um, if you feel inclined, if you if you if they if anything has brought a smile to your face while you're at HQ, throw them a high five, say thanks. Uh, it really means the world, you know, and um, uh, it's. It, I see how much work goes into it on leading up to it, and then even that that whole weekend, and it's really gnarly. Uh, we're not a, a giant uh, corporation; we are a very small company, uh, and every year we're all about to have a, a, a coronary uh, leading up to this because it's just a lot. It's a lot to do, but we really do believe in it, and one of the main reasons we believe in it is because we we believe in the joy that it does bring and for not just you know everyone at the venue but also beyond that into helping lives in the world and we believe in it as a business we believe that look this is how you do good business and we want to do good business and so you know if, if you see somebody just throw them a high five or say thanks or at, at the very least just enjoy yourselves and and we'll see that you're enjoying yourselves and that that will be great for us too great all right so opening night is uh, is the concourse going to be open on Wednesday or Thursday well, we open Thursday morning Okay. Uh, bright and early. I'm going to say between 9 and 10, because you never know what happens early in the morning. But we'll be open by, you know, by 9.30 for sure. Uh, but people start lining up like you know 8.30 to get in there, and so, but which is great, because we'll get them in there. We'll start doing the registration so they can. You know, that's all going to be right there in the Palm, Cor the Palm Cor Plaza right when you walk in. So that activity will be like, oh, I can get my wristband, I register, I get my free, you know, my free necklace with my Nerd Machine Nerd HQ pendant, and I can go up and check it out. And then I'm done. I'm done registering. I'm done everything for the rest of the week, and then I can just hang out and have a great time. Great. Well, um, I wanted to, I know you guys are busy, so I'm going to let you go. you got uh, conversations to, 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 to schedule. you got to get that stuff up so, so the attendees can start buying those tickets. But I wanted to thank you very much. So, um, Zachary Levi, David Coleman, thank you so much for joining our, our podcast tonight, and uh, good luck. Yes. Thanks, Jeremy. That, Jeremy, Kerry, James, thank you guys thank so you much guys. for having us. Uh, we so appreciate all the love that you've given us over the years, and we hope that we can keep doing you proud. Please come by and say hello. Hope, I know we're going to see you there, and uh, make sure we get to shake hands, high five, and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe have a cocktail. I don't know. But... Bada bang. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. We'll see you in San Diego next week. Bye bye. Yeah. See you. Thanks, see you. guys. Thank Thanks you very much. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. This is like this is like the afterburners. Like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. They dropped off. So, very good. Very cool. Are you guys still there? Yeah. We're still here. Yeah, we're still here. That was exciting. That was exciting. That was awesome. I'm That's ready cool. for Nerd HQ. Are you guys ready for Nerd HQ? I'm always ready for Nerd HQ. Are our viewers ready for Nerd HQ? <laughs> 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 I'm ready. I've been ready. And, uh, I'm, like, I'm more excited about this than Comic-Con. <laughs> like, all of, the actual. Uh-oh. <laughs> But I realize that's not everyone's experience. <laughs> <laughs> that is the that we'll, we'll informally right. That we'll just keep that between us. Uh huh. We're called the San Diego Comic Con unofficial and, 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 and blog. And Let's just keep think, that right? between. Fine. <laughs> I'm not saying that we don't all share that. I'm just you know. So uh, that's great, and uh, hopefully our, our listeners and viewers got a lot out of that. Uh, that was a great conversation. We learned a lot about Nerd HQ, and I'm ready for it to start. I wish it was tomorrow. And Fillion's coming. Not that that's I'm, a surprise, I'm, but that's awesome. Yeah, it's always awesome. It's official. Yes. Fillion's it is in official. the room. Uh, that's awesome. So right. the only thing that actually makes me upset is knowing that I'm not going to be there for Thursday and Friday anyway. So now I'm going to be missing Comic Con and Nerd HQ. Wah, wah. What? Yeah, I was pulling I up. Know. I was looking for my that's my sound only, effect. That's the only <laughs> bad thing about it, but it's only personal. So that means everything else is awesome. Poor James. James. James, everything is awesome. Yes. I'll be, I'll be there at night, though. I'll, I'll stop by for parties or something. Keep talking. Oh, we got to keep talking. Okay. we got to keep talking. So, yeah, so, uh, I am interested to see what the old faces with new faces mix is going to be. Maybe uh, maybe a couple of mystery panels again where they mix up the people who showed mm -hmm. up. Uh, I hope so. Uh, what panel are you most hoping shows up, James? Um, it's a tie between 
uh, Orphan Black and some kind of Avengers panel, and hopefully that they're able to do on Saturday or actually Sunday because that's the day I have to read. <laughs> those, those are my. Those we are might my know somebody, well. James, if you want to, you know, <laughs> talk to him about that. <laughs> but those are my two as well. Orphan Black actually was the first thing I thought of when he said like some new faces with some old because they're bringing in a whole bunch of new cast members this year, so that could be one of them. I'm excited about this, the, yeah. the Sesame Street stuff, and yeah. especially the, the, yeah. the blockhead that you wear, and you can yes. control it. That's awesome. That I can't great. wait to do that. You know, they, they have so many awesome events. I know, like, last year they had, you know, n not inter interactive events, but, uh, you know, they had, like, games, and they had the Oculus there, and you can kind of play some games and do stuff, but this year it sounds just amazing. You know, mm -hmm. the huge, what, what they had, they said that, like, 15... Uh, consoles or something set up for, uh, yeah. for Alien Invasion and uh, I think that's what it's called uh, yeah, and it uh, and and um, you know all the other video games that they have and the Maker stuff and it just sounds awesome. I think they're just going all out this year, yeah. which is great. It's good for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. So um, wow. All right. <laughs> what do we have to talk about next? I don't know. <laughs> we can top that. We should just end it, right? Pretty wow. much. Well, there's exclusives and there's panels and there's things to do at Comic Con. All right. you, can it, you can read it all on our site, which is sdccblog.com. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, there has been a lot going on this week. Oh, so sure. much. It seemed yeah. like it seemed like it was more busy last week and the week before. This yeah. week, it just seems like everybody's just trying to get their press releases out. We got some like last minute exclusives being announced from some of we the. We got companies. we got one big know. thing today though. What what was that? WB bags. Oh yeah, finally. Yeah. So, so let's talk about them for a second. I'll pull them up on the site so we can sure. actually look at them while you talk. But there's 13 designs this year, which I don't remember how many there were in previous That's years. That's a lot. Yeah, it seems like it, a lot. It feels it's like, like a 11 lot. 11 or 12 in past yeah. years, so it's about the same, maybe a little bit more. Okay. Well, they're gonna be smaller and more compact, like they were last year, so that they can double as a backpack, which I think is great. Thank because, God. Yes. Those big yes. bags were a pain in the butt to carry. I know. Around. You can't do anything with those. Like. Yep. You could make a dress out of them, and that's about it. <laughs> but uh, they're not going to have... Ooh, Carrie, you there? The cake? Uh -huh, I'm here. Okay. Can Go you ahead. You cut out for a second. Okay. Yep, you cut out. Okay, well, there's going to be no capes this year on the bags, most unfortunately. But no looks like Jeremy's there. got the designs up now. No. Yep, so there's the... Uh, that's the kind of generic one. That's cool, though. It has the... Uh, the convention Wouldn't center. Wouldn't that be the opposite side? Yeah, that's the. Oh, is that what it is? All right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, one. I like yeah, that. It is. There's arrow. I think everybody wants the arrow one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big Stephen Amell on your back. Um. Staring everybody else down, like back off. Yeah, I like that this one. This one's cool. I like that one. That's the very Detective nice. Detective Comics. Yep, Batman seventy-five. Then we've got uh, Batman sixty-six. That's cool. And by the way, um, I know the la the other last the other thing that we're waiting on is um, the key cards for the hotel rooms. Excuse me. And um, yes. we got one today. It's kind of like a, a pre order for the Batman sixty six uh, Blu ray DVD and digital. Um, so that's cool. Uh, what else we got? We've got um, Constantine. That's cool. I like that. Um, we've got uh, the Flash. That's I like that, that one. Actually, that I'm interested in. I, I like yeah, that that's one. nice. That's nice, nice and bright. Cool looking. Yeah, that looks yeah. really, really nice. Um, then we've got the following. So you got Kevin Bacon on your back, which is cool. Um, then you have Gotham. Oh, that Gotham one is very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice skyline. Um, Can't wait and, for that show. Every every trailer I see for that show just makes me want to see it more. I know, and we'll get to see. Oh, we'll yeah, we'll get to see it Saturday night yeah. if we yeah. can get in. Uh, if we can get in, I Zombie. Which is cool. Um, a little gross, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> a little. You want, some, you want some brains with your ramens? Uh, the Mike Tyson mysteries. I like that one. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, although I was always one that I was one of the Scooby Doo bag. I never got it. The originals. Um, that's cool. Uh, wow, thirteen Supernatural. That's neat. I like that. Um, that's not the first year Supernatural bag, right? So um, they're coming out with. They have to come, dig deep to find ways to show the the supernatural bag and do something different each year. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, Teen Titans Go. I know Sean's gonna want that one. That's a nice one. I like that a lot. Um, Vampire Diaries, which is cool. Uh, so we have original originals and Vampire Diaries, and that's it. 
So we have all 13. Wow. Yep. That's and a like, lot of bags. Yeah, it is. But as usual, I'm sure people are going to be trading bags like crazy to get the one they want. Yeah, I want to talk about that. So people, um, uh, uh, you know, we should probably do something, uh, kind of set up a, a informal bag trading something. Because people get the bags and they always say, oh, I mean, sometimes we'll retweet them out or something like that. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it would be cool to um, set up something a little bit more formal where people can meet Maybe up. and just a hashtag. We yeah, should do like a meetup. We should do like a bag trading meetup, like outside the convention center one day. Just say meetup when trade your bags, meet up at this time. No, I think it steps. should be a hashtag because then that way people can look at it and just see. All right, we want I our listeners to come up with What's that? I say that way you could just look for someone who's offering the bag that you want. Yeah, and I want, right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you can uh, just plan to meet them. Yeah, let's uh, let's get uh, let's get one of our um, our listeners to give us the hashtag. Come up with suggestions for hashtags. Um, STCC bag trade. That's a lot of that's a lot of letters. <laughs> when you're when you're running around in the convention, that's a lot of letters, right? Uh, let's Don't all the apps now. Once you type it once, you can let you type it. You know, and <laughs> auto fill for you. All right. Let's how, many, how many times do you think you're swapping your bag, James? How many times do you need to tweet this? Fifteen yeah, that's true. times until I get the one I actually want. <laughs> right. Exactly. You'll be like, somebody, please. No, no, I want this one. No, no, I want this one. I changed my um, mind. So, well, so, actually, that's what my roommate did last year. Was she had like a whole strategy? She wanted the Vampire Diaries bag, but she couldn't find anybody with it. Mm -hmm. So she managed to trade hers for a Supernatural bag, and she was like, "Okay, there's going to be some dude who walks out of the convention center with a Vampire Diaries bag, and he's going to want this, and I'll trade him." So that's what she did. Like she had a whole strategy. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, have all right. So this is this is what we want our listeners and readers to do. Um, tweet us at. Uh, SD underscore comic underscore com with the hashtag SD Concast and give us your hashtag tweet for the bag bag trading. We want to see it. And we'll pick the best one. And uh, who knows? Maybe I'll write it on my hashtag shirt in the in the in the blank spot. Wouldn't that be cool? Um. All right. What else? We got Legos, but that they kind of wait to see what the other Legos. Are. One of the minifig exclusives, right? Yeah, they only showed one, and they said there's going to be four. So. Right, the collector. Yeah. Uh, but I want that uh, that rocket raccoon one with the the warbird. Yeah, that looks very cool. And I'm never gonna get it, but I want it. <laughs> well, and they also announced a Star Wars Rebel set, which they're gonna be doing. I think 200 yep. a a day. 250 a day. 250 a day. Total. Yep, and also a Batman 66 Batmobile, which is cool. Aren't didn't they say that all three of those are gonna be that way? There's 250 yep. a day each of all three of those mini. That's sets? right. That's right. And okay. how that usually works is that they'll tell you what time they go on sale. And you just have to be at the booth around that time. They don't give advanced tickets for those. They just kind of say line up, and whenever they're gone, they're gone. I think that's how it works. At least that's how it worked before. Um, all right. Uh, what else we got? We still got a lot of questions from our interview with Zach. Um, Some this of is those one we can we can answer. Uh, well, this is one rewatch uh, re uh, or re-listen to the podcast because a lot of it was answered. Yeah, and I know. you can also go read our previous interview with him where they also went into a lot more detail about some of the things as well. There you go. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, this is funny. Ninja Turtle said, will Zach be giving out free high fives again this year? When he said that, you know, give somebody a high five, I was like, that's a, that's a charity right there. Fives for fives. You like that? Wow. <laughs> you like that? Send, send that to him. Fives he for said, fives. You said, yeah. that's funny. Fives for fives. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, if you guys came in late, I know there's a lot of lot of questions um, that that were answered earlier. So uh, why don't you go ahead and rewatch the the interview with Zach and, and David? Um, you know, everybody's asking about uh, Nathan Philly and some of the other conversations that they have planned. So um, so yeah, watch that. You'll get your answer. Um, anything else going on? Um, we've got our Six enchantment. Days. Yeah, we got our enchantment Six under days. the SDCC party. Um, yeah. Tickets went on sale uh, and, and for like a second <laughs> on <laughs> Monday. Much literally, yeah. And I, I want to thank everybody for, for, for jumping in there and trying to get tickets. I, I'm really excited. Uh, we're, on, we're on Hollywood Reporter again this year for, for our Wednesday night party. Um, so I think you guys are going to have a blast. So just wanted to say it's not sold out. Uh, the only thing that was sold out was the VIP tickets for the T-shirts. Uh, everybody else, it's first come, first serve. Line up and, and, uh, you know, try and, and get in. 
it's free as well, so don't think you need to show up. And yeah, you can get in for free. Just you might need to line up to get in. But we're giving away a ton of great stuff, including uh, Hasbro Fast Pass and some things from Udon and some of our other lovely sponsors. Yeah, you guys want to hear what we're given from from Udon? I, I uh, boom boom said they they're mailing everything to um to the hotel. So I don't know exactly what we're getting from 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 them yet. But hold on, let me pull up. I'll tell you exactly what you can get from Udon, which is really, really cool. Um, all right, this is what this is what they're giving away. Okay, they're giving away a, one copy of Udon's. This is great. 2014 convention exclusive hardcover Udon's Art of Capcom Complete Edition. That's a hundred dollar value. We're giving one of those away for the raffle. Not only that, we've got two out of print um, hardcovers from previous convention years that they're going to be giving away. Uh, a Mega Man 25, um, Mega Man, Mega Man X uh, complete, uh, Official Complete Works Limited Edition hardcover. That's, again, $100, uh, $100, va $100 value. And then a copy of Udon's 2012 convention exclusive hardcover, Marvel vs. Capcom Official completed, Complete Works Limited Edition hardcover. So we're, we're raffling all three of those away, which is awesome. And then... For our 200 guests uh, that get swag items, they're all getting a signed Udon Street Fighter 2014 comic. That's nice, signed. Nice. I know, and that's and that's just one of our sponsors. Who knows what Boom's bringing? And then Warner Archive is going to have DVDs. Uh, we've got uh, Symbiote Studios giving us one of each of their exclusives to to raffle off. It's going to be great. I'm really excited. There's some really some great things there, and we're trying to get some people to stop by. Some, uh, some as as Zach calls them, celebs. So we'll uh, we'll see if we can actually get some folks to to stop by. We're working on that. Uh, you know, timing's so crazy, and everybody's all tied up. But hopefully, we can get some folks. Um, and what, yeah, are so the, what are the hours of our party, Jeremy? <laughs> well, it starts at eight. Um, it it it'll officially end around ten ish. Although you can stay at the bar and, and drink and hang out and, and eat food as long as you want. Um, I'll, I'll stay there as long as I can stand <laughs> and then get ready for the next morning. Because uh, I know a lot of people are going to be at preview night. So um, it, and, and since we start at 8, the one thing we wanted to do was start at 8 o'clock for the people who couldn't make preview night. Um, and then, you know, it started that way last year. And then this year, everyone's like, well, talk about tough choices you know, am I going to be able to go to preview night or go to your party? So we're now one of those tough choices, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's going to be 8 to 10-ish. Um, I think around, like, 9, 9.30-ish, um, we'll, we'll do the raffle for the giveaways because I think uh, we've got so many giveaways, we're just, it's going to take a while to get, get through all those. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, and, and if you want to raffle, um, it's easy enough. Just buy, buy a drink at the bar or from, from, a, from, a, from one of the staff there. Um, buy a food item, you get a raffle ticket. Simple as that. Um, and uh, and there you go. Um, let's see, what else? What else we got, Carrie? Anything else? Um, I know we're we're excited. Oh well, let's talk about our plans. Let's talk about our plans a little bit for next week, right? Because this is probably our last official um, one of these podcasts from SDCC Blog HQ. My lovely, uh, my lovely room here, uh, because this time next week we're all going to be on the ground in San Diego. That's so right. what we want to, yeah. So what we want to do is we're not going to have a regular podcast next week, but we are going to try and do um, audio, video, obviously blog posts throughout the convention. So we'll try and upload as much as we can, as fast as we can, um, and we're going to try some things a little different this year. We're going to try some, uh, you know, like we want to, we want to talk to to our readers and viewers. So we want to we want to interview some of the, the the folks that are there on the ground in San Diego as well. Talk to them a little bit, get them involved in the podcast. Ask them what they like most, what they're what they're anticipating most. Um, you know, if, if we make it into some of the big panels, um, because we have to line up like everybody else, um, we're going to. Um, oh, we could talk about that real quick. Um, yeah. The wristbands, but um, but uh, when we get, uh, you know, if we get in. Um, I, I think we want to try something a little different this year. Um, you know, everybody posts the the panel videos and things like that, and you know that's great and all for people who can't make it to Comic Con. But what we want to do this year is is give it little give give our coverage a little bit more 
of the experience like you were there or you're there with us. So um, so we want to we want to kind of integrate within the crowd and talk to the audience and things like that and 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 kind of capture those 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 reactions pre and post panel uh, and put those up. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So if you see us, um, you know maybe you'll be talking to us on a, a podcast or a video. So um, so all right, uh, I forgot about that. That's one of the biggest things of, yeah. the, of the week. Is the wristbands yeah. biggest thing of the year, almost yeah. biggest change for them? Yeah. yeah. And and we sent uh, Comic Con some some questions, so we got some answers for that. But cause, so, Carrie, why don't you talk a little bit about um, the change? About about the change, and then I'll pull up what some of our questions that we got from or answers what we got from CCI. Sure. Uh, Comic Con International announced the other day that for Hall H only, basically before the first panel, they will now be handing out color-coded wristbands, and the way that they're doing the colors is they've broken it up into four different colors, and those colors basically represent a one quarter of Hall H each. And so the theory, part of their theory, I think, kind of is, so once, if you line up in the morning and you see that all of those wristbands have been given out, you kind of know, okay, well, there's already enough people in this line to fill up Hall H, so I'm probably not going to get in. I should go do something else with my day if what I really wanted was that first panel. Like go to, go to Nerd HQ, of course. Exactly, or Barroom 20, or the exhibit floor, or whatever else you want to do. But it kind of gives you an idea of where you stand in that line. Um, and then the other thing that it will affect, although whether or not this is Comic-Con International's plan or not is kind of up for debate, but it'll obviously have a huge effect on line campers mm -hmm. because part of the policy is that everyone, like, let's say you're camping out and you've got two friends coming to join you later. If you are standing in that line when they are handing out the wristbands and your friends are not, you can't get their wristbands, you can't do anything. Like, they need to physically be there. And if and they have to go to the back of the line now because yes. they can't get in line where the wristbands have already been handed out. Yes, yes. And even if, like, they show up later and they get a different colored wristband, it's not like they can then come and join you in right. the other section. And also, what's important to note is that once you get your wristband, it's not like you can just leave. Someone in your group has to stay in line. You have to have one person from your party stay in line. So if you get a wristband at, you know, 5.30 on Friday for the Saturday morning panel, yes. um, you can elect or rotate, but somebody's got to stay there. Everybody else can go home and sleep and shower as long as they're back um, yes. before they, they let people in the room. So if you got that wristband and you're, somebody from your party's already there, you're guaranteed in, which is cool. Yeah. Now... Yeah. They say it's not guaranteed, but they're basically saying the number is correct for how many people are going in. Now, this was this was an interesting uh, statement, and I don't know if you guys saw this. Um, so one of the answers that we got from, uh, and, and I'll read this quote. So the wristbands are color coded, okay, mm -hmm. with each quarter of the room yeah. being assigned a different color. Right. So does that mean that you are tied to a specific section? No, it doesn't uh -huh. mean that at all. Okay. Well, it says each quarter of the room being assigned a specific color. I think it's a quantity. Yeah. Okay. It's just a quantity. It's just so that, like, if you show up and you say, okay, well, I'm the fourth color, that means I'm going to be in the very back of the room. I don't care. I don't want to mm -hmm. wait in this line. Mm -hmm. I think that's really all that it's for. It's not like you're guaranteed. Because they also said that if by the time the first panel starts and they've let everybody in who has wristbands, if there's still people standing in line and there's still seats, they're right going to let them through. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. Yeah, so, so this is how it's going to work. So, um, uh, so uh, you know, it says on Wednesday night we'll start passing out wristbands for Thursday only shortly after the exhibit hall closes. Oh, after the exhibit hall closes. So after 9 o'clock um, p.m., they're going to start passing out wristbands for Thursday. And then after the so so on Thursday when the Hall H programming ends, that's when they'll start passing out wristbands for Friday and so forth for Saturday and so forth for Sunday. Um, they're going to be uh, so they say as people get in line, they'll hand out wristbands. They're going to do that continuously. They'll stop at 1 a.m. and they'll resume at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be that that four hour gap um, that you may know or not if you're going to get into to, to, to Hall H. Um, 
Uh, if they start handing the tickets out at 5 a.m. again, they'll hand out probably finish whatever whoever has lined up in those four yeah, hours. Yeah, they'll finish it. Yeah, yeah that's within that's an it. hour, and yeah. then you'll still have time to know whether you're getting in the room to be able to make changes in your plans if you are way back. Right. Yeah. Now, now also, I, I I recommend everybody listen to our our panel breakdowns because it there there I'm not saying that this is going to be for any of the days, but there very very well may be a big panel in the morning and that it might rotate or clear out in the afternoon. So if you're there looking for a panel that afternoon, you know, we're not saying don't go back to Hall H. We're saying, you know, check back and see how the line is or seeing how the, how the room is rotating. Also, follow us on Twitter. Uh, follow the hashtag Hall, uh, Hall H, uh, and we'll be telling everybody, you know, what the capacity is from inside the room. Um, you know how the uh, where where the line is at that point, that sort of thing. So so don't get discouraged, but it all depends on the the panel schedule that day. I also I also want to remind people the wristbands will only be handed out prior to the first panel. And so if you show up at, for the second panel and you're like, where's my wristband? Again, they're only handing them out for the first panel. So don't yeah, think you have wristband. to get a wristband in order to show up into Hall H or anything like that. Great point. Yeah, and the other thing. All right. So this. So we got an answer. I wanted to ask this because uh, some of our listeners and readers were asking this question. So let's say it's Saturday, or you know, there's it's Friday night. Let's just say that, and everybody's waiting in line for the Saturday panels because those are the biggest ones, arguably, of the week, and you only have a Saturday badge. Okay. So theoretically, you know, you can get into Comic Con on Saturday. Well. Um, if if you're in line on Friday and you don't have a Saturday badge in hand, you're not carrying one, right? You cannot get a wristband. So that means that the next morning you have to go pick up your wristband, get in line in Hall H, and make sure that you can get get a wristband. Now, if they're passing them out at 5 a.m., it could very well be that you get your badge, you go over to Hall H, and they're they're already at capacity, or they think they're at, you know what I mean? In which case, then they would probably encourage you to go somewhere else. Um, but, uh, you know, and I'm wondering if that, you know, we did the, uh, the video last year of the Hall H line, and it took me 15 minutes to walk the overflow, so not you know, across the street from the, from the plaza. It was by the bayfront all the way around the marina and down onto the island, and it wrapped around. I mean, you, you're probably not going to see that this year because people are going to know whether they're going to get in or not. But, but that's one thing we wanted to make sure that everybody knew. So if you have a friend that has a four-day and you only have a Saturday badge uh, and you get in line with them and you're in the first shoot on Friday and you're waiting for your, for your wristband, they're going to say, where's your badge? And you say, well, I'm going to pick it up tomorrow morning. And they say, well, you can't get a wristband. Um, Which... Now, on the website, did they alter the language? Because on the website, it says badge or barcode. Hmm. The okay. SDCC website says badge or barcode, so I think we need to clarify that. Because he may be assuming a badge is actually oh, I have a ticket. I'm I just sorry. haven't picked it up yet. I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, all right. I, I misread that. You need to have a badge or barcode. So if you have... I'm sorry. Let me, let okay. me restate that. Whew. Thank you. <laughs> you have your paper. This isn't it. So you can get the wristband I'm with, with the barcode. For that. Yeah, so if you have your, I'm sorry, if you have your piece of paper in hand with your barcode, you haven't picked up your badge, but you have the paper, you can get a wristband. All right, thanks for clarifying. So basically make sure you have that barcode. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. and then just go get in line that you would do to get your badge early enough to get back before they let people in. Yeah. I should read. I should read these things before I actually start talking. About it. Did you did, did you talk, Jeremy, about like what time they're going to start handing out wristbands the other days? I know you did for yeah, Wednesday it's, night. Did you talk about the other days though? Yeah, right after the Hall H uh, programming ends, that's when they'll start handing them out. Yeah, and that's every day. So what that means though is that basically, like, if you go line up at 4 p.m. on Friday afternoon for Saturday's panels, but your friends can't join you until 6 p.m., that's okay because they're not going to start handing out wristbands until 8 p.m., 9 p.m., whatever it is. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That means you're basically all stuck in line until they start handing them out. But then yeah. once they're handed out, then you can start doing the, the switching out and keeping yes. one person there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to wait until the wristbands are there or else you may end up missing someone like a bathroom break, which, you know, yes. you know roughly what time the panels are going to end that day, so you can actually plan that, but just be careful. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. All right. So so let's let's recap then the wristband policy because it is new. So you need uh you need a badge or a barcode. So I'm just going to qualify that uh, or clarify that. Um, then um, then they're going to start handing them out right after on on Wednesday, right after the exhibit hall ends or closes, and then on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right after the Hall H pro programming ends. So around five, six, seven ish, right? Um, well, that's interesting because does that mean that they're not going to hand them out until like 11 o'clock on Friday Sunday night? It, Saturday it, night for Sunday because that's the, the whole yeah. piece. Yeah, right. Am I? Maybe, maybe so they're only going to hand them out for two hours? <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, do we, need to, do we need to clarify that or just wait until we see the, the first day and see what happens? So yeah. The first day isn't going to be the, the, uh, the hugest. Right. Now, you know, obviously, Comic-Con International has it all worked out, and it's all kind of new for us, but we're going to, I think we're, we're going to pay some folks a visit in line and see how, yeah. how this turned out. So um, let us know, you know, let us know when you, ha when you get your wristbands on Thursday or Wednesday night into Thursday. Let us know how the process was, and, you know, maybe we'll stop by and talk to you a little bit about it and put it up on the blog. Um, all right, anything else on wristbands other than Jeremy, shut your mouth? Do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> It, it's it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, I, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic that it will go well and help with some of the issues that have happened in the past years. Yeah, that's that's exactly how I feel, and I think it's just one of those things that no one is really going to know completely how it works until we actually see it in place. Yeah, uh, we've got. I, I wanted to say this. So uh, we've got a ton of uh, <laughs> of hashtags for the yeah, back. Yeah, those. This is great. I love it. Let me let me read some of these. These are fantastic. Um, so we've got uh, where we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So ready, steady, stop. Uh, that's the uh, zombie walk organizer. Uh, says uh, she did that last year. So that's SDCC bag trade. Um, yeah, SDCC bag trade. People like that. There's swag bag swap. Um, the in infinite net says you blog. Uh, bag train, you blog being us. <laughs> I like this one. Geek Thread says my SDCC bag sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, bag swap. Let's see what else. Um, bag SDCC bag swappers. Um, I like this one. <laughs> Hashtag I want your bag. That could mean several <laughs> things though. So we might want to avoid that one. That's great. Yeah, we don't want like a Craigslist situation going on here. <laughs> um, uh, I like this one. Uh, these are good. Serendipity WAF says, uh, "Bag me Nerd HQ." Uh, oh, she says, "Why not have the bag trade meet up at Nerd HQ?" Proposed uh, hash ba ha hashtags, "Bag me Nerd HQ," "Sack it to me," and hashtag "This ain't my bag." I like that. Those are cool. Uh, J J Temkin says, "SDCC got bag." That's cool. Um, yeah, got a lot of them. So uh, keep them coming. We'll come up with one, or we'll we'll select we'll 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 select, select one. one. Yeah, it's fun stuff. All right, uh, what else do we have, Carrie? Anything else that's big this this week? Nerd HQ. What's going Nerd on with Nerd HQ? <laughs> you know, very soon. It, it very would be soon. great if someone would just come onto our podcast and tell us all about it. <laughs> it would. Do we know anybody that we could talk to about that? We should get on that. We yeah. really should. Yeah, we should get on that. No, I, actually, I wanted to say again, very, very big thanks to David and Zach, but also everybody behind the scenes yes. um, that helped organize that and uh, have been uh, uh, working with us, working with uh, the Nerd, Nerd Machine and Nerd HQ um, over the past few months, you know, because we've been covering this since the, the crowdfunding back in the spring. So, uh, wow, it's, it's really going to happen now. It's going to happen. After all this... Less than a week, yeah. Yeah, next week we're going to be at Nerd HQ. Mm -hmm. That's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. Yep. I can't wait. I uh, like that it's not next week we're going to be in Comic Con. It's next week we're going to be at Nerd HQ. Yeah. What? <laughs> next next week at going this time? On? Yes. There's next something going on. Next week is the Nerd Party. Come on. Everyone yeah, next week right. is the Nerd Party. That's right. We're all going to be there wearing our hashtag shirts. I have to, I'll have to have several. I think it starts stinking by <laughs> the end of well, I kept like five for me last year, and I would just swap them out. But the funny thing was, you know, like you're running around Comic Con so much, those things were just like, they were nasty. Like by midday, I had to change my shirt. So, um, it's a little yeah. TMI, Jeremy. Well, I'm just, <laughs> if you come and give me a hug, I'm just, you know, letting you know what you're in for. <laughs> just warning in advance, I'm a little sweaty, but if you want it, bring it on. 
I'm a little stinky, but so is everybody else around here. Essence. Um, the essence yeah, the essence of Comic Con. It's bottled, bottled up. Um, and speaking of t-shirts, if you didn't get one in our VIP sale, we will be doing a couple of random drops around Comic Con to where we'll just tweet out something, and if you find the shirt, it's yours. However, I can promise they will not be the ones that Jeremy has been wearing and getting completely <laughs> gross. I, I promise you that they will they will be brand new and yes. never they will have never touched human skin except for it to be held. Yes. They, they will never have touched my sweaty back. There. That's that's the U blogs guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> we need a hashtag for those. Give us a hashtag for the t shirt drop. <laughs> no no stinky shirts. Um all right, uh what else do we got? going on here. I'm just trying to look. Oh, and uh, Thursday, um, be on the lookout for um, a tweet and get a free cupcake at Heavenly yes. Cupcakes, which is right across from um, from uh, Petco Park. But you have to wait for our tweet. Um, and we'll let you know when that's going to happen. And you can celebrate our fifth anniversary at Comic-Con, which is awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And again, we're still working on some other surprises as soon as I get time to do them. Um, Good I've got to call some people. Yeah, I've got to call some people. What is our blog down? No, I'm on it. Really? Yeah, really. <laughs> I better end this podcast before I uh, before we lose internet. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, anything uh, else you want to talk about, Carrie? Uh, Comic Con International. Uh, oh, the new iPhone. App. Auto- well, they announced two things. They announced the new iPhone app. Which you can go download now. It's got some cool things, including it actually lists some offsites, which it's never done before. So that's kind of cool. Um, the two new offsites it listed more information about than we'd really heard about before were the Game of Thrones Survive the Realm, which is it sounds basically like it's going to be the same thing that it was last year, but it lists location and hours and all that good stuff. And you can find that on the app or on our site. And it also talked about uh, Homer's Dome which is going to be over on the WB lawn. That's great. And, yeah, and I'm trying to pull this up now. But it's like a 4D experience, and it's... What does it say? Hey, you're using yeah. your app. Look at that. I am using my app. Get inside Homer's head, literally. Take a 4D journey into Homer's thoughts for larger-than-life Simpsons experience. So that'll be over on the WB lawn. Uh, FXX is bringing it. Sounds kind of cool. Yeah. Do we know anything more about the zip line? Like how that's going to work or when that's going to start or any of that stuff? Did they post the zip line on here? Is that on there? Yes, actually it is. Look at that. This is exclusive. <laughs> Not really. Exclusive from the Comic Con <laughs> iPhone app. Exclusively looking at the Comic Con app. <laughs> basically. Uh, it looks like the hours are going to be Thursday to Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., but I think that's basically just the hours for the lawn. Uh, and it says basically exactly what we knew, but Fox will recreate Gotham City and fans will be able to play the hero and zipline through the city landscape. Fans will walk away with a photo of their experience and cool Gotham swag, which I think they actually get uh, like a police badge, like a that's Gotham cool. City police badge. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, um, but, but that's Jer- just... Go ahead. Jeremy's use of the word exclusive. <laughs> Is it... <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. But Jeremy's interpretation of the wristband rules. <laughs> but <laughs> but you can go download the app now. Uh, yeah, do it. Yeah. And, and it syncs with MySched, does it? The, can you log into no. MySched from it? No. no. But MySched is still totally different. But it has the schedule on there. So I'm gonna do this real quick because uh, we're totally winging this because uh, we're just we were just all about Nerd HQ. And, we uh, wake this every time. <laughs> well, yeah. But let's not tell them that, right? Okay. Um, so I'm going to pull up... Uh, oh, my skit is down. <laughs> that's working for you, dude. I think it's your internet that's down. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got... Uh, no, it's, it's loading up, but very slowly. Um, okay, well, while he's doing that, real quick... Comic-Con International also announced uh, their autograph signings in the sales pavilion, Mm -hmm. and George R. R. Martin is doing one, Uh, Sesame Street is doing one, a whole bunch of people are doing one. But you can go read about that on our site or on Comic-Con's site. 
Wouldn't that be Ooh. awesome if George R. R. Martin was doing one with Sesame Street? It would be much more awesome if Sesame Street was doing it as the puppets. <laughs> yeah, what, what, that's what Sarah was saying. Can I get an autograph from Grover? Is that what she said? Exactly. If that was happening, yeah, I would be much more into it. All right, so uh, I wanted to say, uh, so everybody that hasn't been using SCED for um, selecting your panel schedule, um, do that right now um, so that you have all your panel selections um, organized and ready for next week. Um, the other thing that you can do is when you log in here, you can actually, um, at least you could in years past, um, let me see. Yeah, uh, there's a, so there, here, let me show you this. Let me uh, screen share this sucker. Um, Tell us more, right. Jeremy. You see this? So I'm at the uh, Comic-Con 2014 sked.org. Um, if you go to the mobile app plus iCal and click on that, um, something will happen. Here you go. So bookmark on your phone by visiting this. All right, so this is what I'm talking about, though. iCal for Google Calendar, Outlook, and Apple. So if you do, you can do two things. You could say iCal for your schedule, and here it is. Or you could do iCal for your first full schedule, and you can do that. And what you can do there is you basically, uh, oh, there's iCal for your schedule, and then there's, um, oh, you can do like Google Calendar subscribe link, so it links to Google, Outlook, export for downloading, Apple iCal. Essentially what this does is that you can, um, you can um, uh, sync this with your personal calendar. So, uh, so when you go on to your uh, phone app, you're not having to load up the web page all the time. You just go to your calendar and you see all your picks or the full schedule if you're crazy. But, <laughs> you know, like, uh, so, so that's why I always recommend doing your first, second, third choices so you have those on your, on your phone. And then all you have to do is say, okay, what's going on now? And you can actually get alerts for those, you know, when to be, where to be and when. Um, so, so that is uh, imperative that you guys do that. Um, same thing with our off-site events. I know a lot of people are using that as well. So go to our calendar. You can click on the iCal um, uh, button on the bottom, and you can pull in the whole off-site list or just a day of, of those off-site events if you don't have a ticket for that day or just at a venue or just uh, individual events. You can pull those in your calendar. Um, and, and the thing about iCal is it's a once you have that association with your calendar, um, any changes on the main calendar get pushed to yours. So that's very uh, cool. All right, now I want to talk a little bit about uh, what are the most popular panels so far. Wait a minute. Are you serious? Look at this. Yes. Number, number this one is... is why, this is why when you're like, why are these things in Hall H? This is why. No, I'm not saying why. I'm just saying how can Marvel Studios be third? Because Game of Thrones is really freaking popular. I guess. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? if you're going to ask. <laughs> People go to that panel? <laughs> People go there? Um, but, uh, yeah, Game of Thrones panel and Q&A. Uh, number two is Walking Dead. Number three is Marvel Studios. Number four is Warner Brothers. Number five is the big um, Hall H event on Saturday night. Then we got uh, Paramount, Marvel Television, 20th Century Fox, Legendary, DreamWorks. Um... And then Goonies is number 11. Wow. Which is cool. Look at that. I have nine of the top 11 selected on my calendar. And you know what's sad? Comic-Con is six days away, and Legendary and Paramount still have not actually confirmed what they're bringing. <laughs> no, but it came from the rap that they said they did. Well, um, yeah, but I mean... Well, they, like they the actually studio. said that, that they, were, they announced it. So, um, so we just had a, a report, but... We'll see. Uh, I'm going through this whole list. Uh, Time Story is number 40. Batman 66 is 46. Weird Al, yeah, Al is 47. Jeez, look at that. Um, that's crazy, huh? Uh, let's see. You know, there's the uh, and I wanted to to mention. I'm gonna take it off of this so you can see us talk. Um, the um, the 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 musical anatomy of a superhero. Yes. Um, we're doing a contest right now that ends on Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, but essentially, you know, they got upgraded into a bigger room. So they were doing, I think they were like in 6A last year or something like that. They got upgraded to Indigo Ballroom and they wanted to make sure that they got the word out. So we're helping them get the word out. So go to our site. We're giving away an awesome prize pack that they put together, which is like tons of 
all these Marvel studios and uh, Marvel movies. Uh, they're giving away the actual theatrical posters signed by the composers. Uh, they're giving away so uh, soundtrack CDs, minimum of six, and they list those out. I mean, they're great ones. There's like a Days of Future Past, Thor 2, um, you know, tons of stuff on there. They're giving away two Funko Pops. They're giving away an AMC gift card, uh, uh, you know, for the movie theaters. I mean, it's a great prize pack. So I know so it's amazing. I yeah, want it. <laughs> I know I want it. I'm gonna <laughs> enter. <laughs> but uh, let's let's go to um, or, so go to our site, check that out. Um, we'll put it in the show notes as well. You have till Sunday night to subscribe and, or to to enter, and it's easy. Just follow us on Twitter and add add the um, uh, add the panel to your schedule. And let's get the word out to everybody. Um, all right, uh, is there anything else? I think that's really about it. I mean, yeah, we're at. It. You know what? Our our winner of our. Um, uh, oh, uh, thrilling adventure hour. They never responded, so we're gonna have to pick a new winner. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, craziness. We'll see you guys in less than a week, though. Yeah. So look for us. Say hi. Give us high fives. Yeah. yeah. Five. five. Fives for fives. We'll take five bucks and we'll give you a high five. <laughs> no, don't give us five dollars. Don't do that. Jeremy will charge for his high fives. James and I will not. <laughs> I don't know. I'm running that sound out. i got to stop doing it. Um, all right. Any other questions from our audience before we call it a day? We... Oh, there we go. So Eleanor, Eleanor underscore Grace on Twitter just entered the musical enemy of superhero super pack. So cool. Um, look for that on Twitter and uh, the links links there. All right, uh, let's close this out because we've got stuff to do. We got to get ready for next week. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank all of our listeners and viewers this year. Uh, it's been awesome. Um, obviously, we're going to do a wrap up show after Comic Con, um, but uh, like I said, this this is going to be our last regular one from. SDCC blog HQ will do you know impromptu ones on the ground, um, but uh, James, where can our listeners find more of your work on the internet? Uh, pretty much everywhere, uh, Flickr, Twitter, all that. Uh, Dan Regal, and you can check out our photo site, my my wife and I's photo site at geekshotphoto.com. All right, Carrie, how about you? You can find me on Twitter at Carrie Dixon, which is K E R Y D I X O N, and you can find me next week at Nerd HQ. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you can find me at Spot Anime. Um, you can also find us at the blog at SD underscore comic underscore con on Twitter. Our website is obviously SDCCblog.com. Hopefully we've got some new listeners and viewers uh, from, uh, from thanks to, to Zach and uh, the Nerd HQ interview today, Zach and David. Um, but we're also on iTunes. If you'd like to subscribe, the links are up on the blog or search for us. Uh, search for SD Concast in iTunes. If you like what you've heard so far, please review us. We're also on Stitcher Radio, so go to the link in the show notes. You can stream that right from the website. If you want to get a hold of us, you can send us an email at uh, sdcomiccon.blog at gmail.com. Find us at Facebook at facebook.com slash sdconblog or tweet us at sd underscore comic underscore con. Wait, James, i got to get the sun. The music ready. Hold it. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Don't give it up. Don't give it up. Uh, what? What's going on? Don't say it. Don't say it. What's 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 don't what's going don't on? don't don't say our closing is what he's saying. Don't do anything. No. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll All right. Now you anything. now you can say it. I can say what. Go. Uh, wait. Go what? Speed racer, go. Shwarma. When just we wrote you back, you almost had a heart attack. You still talk about it to this day. It's a memory that lingers on Like meeting Spike at Dragon Con Or seeing Nathan Fillion in L.A. What will your children think of Angel When they're born When they're born Oh, will they love River like you did when they're gone, when they're gone?